As we discussed in a recent lesson, there is a dizzyingly large variety of ways to measure concentration. From the practical standpoint of creating a solution of a given concentration, we can divide these into three groups based on their denominator. We have a set where the denominator is the volume of the final solution. We have a set where the denominator is the mass of the final solution, or where the denominator can be easily converted into mass. And finally, we have one case where the denominator is the mass of the solvent. Let's look at these three groups one at a time. Let's start with molality, which is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. This is pretty straightforward to do. We weigh the solvent, we weigh the solute and convert it to moles, we add the solute to the solvent, and mix. That's it. Next, we have the measures where the denominator is the mass of the solution, or is easily converted into the mass of the solution. This one is also pretty straightforward. You weigh the solute and add it to a teared container. You add the solvent until the mass is the desired amount, and you're done. Finally, we have the cases where the denominator is the volume of the solution. These concentration measures require a different technique. Typically, chemists use volumetric flasks for this purpose. These flasks have a single mark that specifies very precisely the volume underneath it. What we do is add our solute, add some solvent, but not enough to reach the mark, mix the sample until the solute is fully dissolved, and then add enough solvent to bring the solution volume up to the mark. Finally, we mix it again to ensure that the concentration is uniform throughout the entire sample. This way, we have a well-defined amount of solute and a well-defined amount of final solution. These methods of solution preparation are not directly usable for creating very low concentrations, such as in the PPM and lower levels. So let's look at an example of why we might want to create such a sample, and then how we might go about making that sample. The EPA limit for arsenic in drinking water is 10 ppb by mass. If a scientist wants to test a detection method or a remediation method at that level, she will need to make a solution of that concentration to test it on. So using our 250 milliliter volumetric flask shown here, how much arsenic is that? Well, we look at our definition of ppb by mass, put an X for the amount of arsenic, and assume that the solution is so close to pure water that we can just convert 250 milliliters to 250 grams. We solve for X and find that we need 2.5 micrograms of arsenic. Usually, a solution of arsenic is made by dissolving arsenic trioxide in water with some sodium hydroxide. So we can use dimensional analysis to find out how much arsenic trioxide we would need to measure out, 3.3 micrograms. This is far too little to reliably measure out on a standard laboratory balance. So our strategy is going to be to create a more concentrated solution where we can make reasonable measurements and then dilute it. Molarity is by far the most common concentration measure in chemistry, so it is often a good idea to convert other units into molarity when doing calculations. We're going to do that here. Let's figure out what 10 ppb by mass of arsenic is in molarity. So let's do that by expressing our concentration in ppb and use dimensional analysis to convert it to molarity. 10 ppb means 10 times 10 to the negative 9th grams of arsenic per gram of solution. And since the solution is almost entirely water, we can call that denominator a gram of water. Let's first convert the denominator using the density of water. Then we convert the numerator using the molar mass of arsenic. And we find that 10 ppb arsenic is 1.3 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. We want to reach this concentration by dilution of a more concentrated solution. So let's talk about dilution. When our concentrations are expressed in molarity, there's a very convenient equation we can use. C1V1 equals C2V2, where the Cs represent concentrations and the Vs represent volumes. Think for a moment about what this means. What do you get when you multiply a concentration of a sample by its volume? You get the number of moles of solute. So this equation is saying that if we take a known volume of a concentrated solution, the product on the left tells us how many moles of the solute we have. If we dilute that sample to a new volume, the number of moles of solute won't have changed, so we can find the new concentration easily. Applying this formula to our arsenic example, our target concentration is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 7 molar, and we are using our 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Let's suppose that we have a micropipette that can accurately measure 100 microliters. 
If we solve for C1, we are finding the concentration of arsenic we would need to start with for this dilution to do what we want. That's still a pretty low concentration, but it's not as ridiculously low as what we were starting with. So let's do a quick calculation to see if making the solution is reasonable in a 250 milliliter volumetric flask. It looks like we need 8 milligrams. That's doable. So let's summarize the process we've decided on. Weigh 8.2 milligrams of arsenic trioxide, add it and the appropriate amount of sodium hydroxide to a 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Add water, dissolve, fill to the mark, and fully mix. Take 100 microliters of this initial solution and dilute it in a fresh 250 milliliter volumetric flask to the mark. 8 milligrams is on the border of being a reasonable mass to weigh, so if you want more precision, you could add a second dilution step so that you are working with an even larger mass in, of your sample in the first step.